You're live. Ah, okay. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Okay. It took a while <laughs> for it to connect. So, uh, welcome to the live. Hopefully everyone can hear me. Hopefully the connection stays good. Uh, I am Kayla Cox. I am the owner of this channel and of a website by the same name, six miles to supper .com. I lost weight from go going from obese to a normal BMI by practicing intermittent fasting six days a week and walking six miles a day, hence the name, Six Miles to Supper. I mostly practice OMAD, uh, but uh, like in maintenance, I, I do it a little bit differently. I do more of an intermittent fasting type thing as opposed to strict OMAD, uh, you know, six days a week. And I take a cheat day every Sunday. And I've done that from 2016, which is when I lost the bulk of my weight. Uh, I've written two books. Uh, one is The Laidback Guide to Intermittent Fasting, and the other is uh, Overcoming Weight Loss Obstacles, How to Keep Going When Things Get Difficult. And uh, those are both available on Amazon. I also have a podcast that you can find wherever you get your podcast, and a new episode comes out about once a week. So, and a new video usually comes out on YouTube about once a week also. So, with all that being said, if you have a question about intermittent fasting or walking or uh, just general weight loss, uh, leave it in the chat and I will answer your question to the best of my ability. I'm not a doctor or a nutritionist, um, and so I just go based off of my experience. So, uh, this is not a substitute for medical advice. Okay, so with that in mind, um, I do have a couple of questions that have already been submitted. So. Um, Let's get started with that. So the first question was, uh, I'm at a normal uh, BMI, but my waist to height ratio is greater than 0.5. Um, I'm unable to do keto, uh, but I'm trying to go lower carb during the lockdown. Are there any, do you have any suggestions on what to change and how long will it take to reduce belly fat? So I think that's a great question and it's kind of a tough thing, right? Because uh, you know, according to the studies I've seen, uh, the waist to height ratio is actually a, a better indicator of, you know, um, mortality uh, than strict BMI. So in other words, like you might be at a normal BMI, but if your waist to height ratio is greater than 0.5, you have an increased risk of death due to like heart attack and stroke and things like that. So uh, waist to height ratio is really simple to calculate. If you've not calculated yours, you just take your height in inches and then divide it by two. So, uh, and then that's what you want your waist to be less than. So for example, I'm 5'6", so that's 66 inches. You divide by two, that's 33 inches. So my waist needs to be less than 33 inches in order for the waist to height ratio uh, to be, you know. Uh, Good luck. Okay, <laughs> sorry everyone. I'm in an RV and I have to depend on a data connection, so sometimes it just disconnects. So I'm really sorry for the disconnect. But uh, so what I'm saying is, so this is something I really relate to because I've had three children. My belly is certainly the place where I still continue to carry excess, you know, flab, I would say. And um, although my, my weight is uh, lower than that threshold. So here's what I know though. When you lose weight, you lose it all over. You don't just lose it from your belly. And gosh, it seems like the belly is the last place that it will go on some of us. Um, and so it's really frustrating, right? Because you, you want to know what will bring belly fat off. Really, it's about, you know, losing just more weight in general and you'll just kind of slim down all over. I know that's not the fun answer, but um, in my experience, it is a slow, process. Um, I, you know, and I, I don't measure very often. And um, I used to measure all the time in 2015, I measured every week. And the thing with that was, uh, I was not being accurate. I was pulling the tape tighter and tighter each week to try to fool myself into thinking I was making progress. I knew that I was doing it, but I was just needing that, that, that win or whatever. And um, so once I started weighing, then I kind of like stopped measuring uh, my waist so much. I would just go based on the weight. And as my weight came down, sure enough, the, the, the waist measurement came down too. But it did feel like, it felt like just when I was looking at my body, it felt like the belly was never getting smaller. But it was, it was just harder to tell. 
and then over time, you know, you, you go down sizes in jeans because, you know, your, your waist is getting smaller. It's a slow process. Once you hit the normal BMI, in my experience, the weight loss is really slow. Like for me, it was a third of a pound a week on average, and that was with me doing OMAD six days a week. So one meal a day, six days a week, cheat day on Sunday, uh, and walking six miles every single day. So it takes a long time. I would just say, if it's very important to you to go, you know, to get your belly to that to that lower uh, number, then uh, just be really patient with yourself. I don't do keto. And the reason I don't do keto and I don't even do low carb is because I love carbs and I do not feel well <laughs> when I am low carb. I just don't do well. My energy levels are not good. I know some people do keto and they say it is fantastic for them. And I think if it's good for you, do it great. But doing it just to try to get to a lower waist size, I don't know that that's sustainable. You'd have to think about that for yourself and, and decide for yourself, like what do you actually like to eat? What do you feel good eating? And then and then base your actions based on that. I firmly believe it has a lot more to do with calorie intake. So like there was a, uh, a science professor, nutrition professor actually, who uh, lost weight uh, and improved uh, his health markers by eating junk food. Okay, so I know that this, you know, keto is very, very popular, but there are people out there who have lost weight, you know, eating, you know, lots of carbs. And um, so I don't know that it's the answer to just go to low carb. I would say uh, just eating a little less than what you're eating right now will get you there. It'll take longer probably, but you'd have to decide for yourself as, if it's more sustainable to do it that way or to go low carb. Uh, for me, low carb is just not sustainable over the long term because I've done it before and I just can't stick with it. So um, the next question was, what kind of creamer do you use in your coffee? Uh, in Canada, creamer is, uh, is what you refer to, like it's sweetened and it's usually flavored like hazelnut or Irish coffee. When I say creamer, what I mean is half and half. I, I use full fat half and half in my coffee. Occasionally, if I'm feeling very luxurious, I'll do a heavy whipping cream, but that's not something that I usually have around uh, because it's more expensive. I usually have half and half. Uh, I don't do sweetened um, creamers, although way back in 2015, I did use, um, I was doing intermittent fasting. I was losing a little bit of weight. I was, it was really, really slow because I was not being consistent. But I did have uh, sugar in my coffee. You're lying. Of sugar in my coffee uh, during the fasting window. I did that to try to make fasting feel easier. My hypothesis was having that sugar in my coffee probably made me hungrier. Um, and so I decided to just, I was not worried about the calorie count of the sugar. What I was more worried about was, is this actually making me feel hungrier during the fasting window? So. Uh, sure enough, it seems to me, and this is, you know, just my experience, it seemed like uh, I felt less hungry when I didn't have uh, sugar in my coffee. And I went really slow with that. I started out at a tablespoon and then I would just have a little less in my, uh, in my coffee, like just maybe like it was like two thirds or three quarters of a tablespoon. And I just like weaned myself really slowly. I made sure I enjoyed it before I cut it a little bit more. And I mean, get myself uh, completely off of sugar in my coffee during the fasting window. But I didn't uh, lower my carbs otherwise. I just, I, the only thing I ever did was to get rid of sugar in my drinks. So, although I will still drink an occasional Coke or, you know, have a milkshake or something, it doesn't happen that often, but anyway. Um, okay, so the next question, I struggle with nibbling. Any tips on this? <laughs> and that's a lot easier said than done, right? So nibbling is a difficult thing because uh, uh, it's really hard to stop once you've started. And it, that's, to me, this is why having rules for yourself, like intermittent fasting, and this is why OMAD worked so well for me, I think, um, is I can always justify another it's like, well, one little bite isn't going to hurt. One, one little bite of this apple. And like, if you've got young kids, I had young kids at this time. And they always left stuff laying around, you know, like a half-eaten sandwich, a, you know, a couple of bites of something. And I'm also very frugal. <laughs> so there's like this 
double thing happening where it was like, ooh, I would like a little bite of an apple or a little, you know, bite of that sandwich or whatever. And I didn't want to waste food. And so I would think, well, you know, this is like basically saving us money, right? So that's not good <laughs> because you end up gaining weight. Um, and so that was one thing that I was really bad about when I was obese. I was constantly eating little bites of stuff here and there. And what I started to notice with intermittent fasting was during my fasting window, I started to see how often I was nibbling on food uh, because I was stressed out about something. Like I'm upset, I want to go to, you know, eating something. Um, and so learning that helped me to start to break that habit even during my eating window. So like at first it was just because, well, I'm not allowed to eat right now, so I'm not going to nibble at all, right? That helped me to see like there's this pattern that I have during you know during the eating window. Oh, okay, I feel stressed. I feel the urge to grab something and just pop it in my mouth. So I had to stop that, um, and that takes a lot of effort over a long, long period of time. Um, it's not easy to break that habit, but it's like every time you do it, every time you like, and I would I, sometimes I would like be in my eating window so I'm allowed to have food you know during that time I would pick up a bite of food right because my kids left it laying around and I would I would stop myself I would like literally like I would have it and I would just put it down and every time you can do that it's like this little victory and if you can do that often enough you get better at it and you start to break that habit and um, it takes time. It's a lot of time it takes a lot of effort and there's no no shortcut that I know of. Um, and I would say that it's also something that's easy to get back in a, into the habit of, even if you have, you know, broken it pretty well for yourself. Um, like I've noticed, uh, you know, uh, so back when I was like losing weight, I was doing OMAD six days a week and then just having the cheat day on Sunday. But during maintenance, I like to be looser with myself. I don't like to do strict OMAD six days a week. Um, just because it feels a little too restrictive. So I like to give myself a little bit more freedom, but that freedom can easily turn into that same kind of nibbling. Okay, you're live. All right, I'm back. So the next question is, what can increase the risk for a plateau on OMAD and how do you get past it? So, oh, like plateaus happen, I think, with everybody. Um, I think it's, I think, you know, I, I've researched it, a whole lot that I can find about them like as far as I guess because it's kind of a hard thing to study uh, I think it, in general weight loss is a difficult thing for scientists to study like real world weight loss is because people are so different and you know if people aren't in a lab they're in real life it's just harder uh, to get that information and make sense out of it but um, it seems to me that probably your body naturally sometimes just kind of puts the brakes on things because your body is trying to keep you alive <laughs> as long as possible right and it doesn't want to really lose weight your your body fat is what will keep you alive during times of famine so uh, so with that being said it, you know it's not impossible to lose weight obviously people do it all the time but I do think your body occasionally just kind of hits the brakes a little and says wait a minute let's stay where we are that's one reason a plateau happens. I think it's just natural. I think you just have to wait it out. Um, and in my experience, that's what works. You have to continue to be consistent during the plateau, which is really, really hard to do because the temptation is change everything, like shock your body you know, or like uh, jump start your weight loss or, you know, or break through the plateau by, you know, going low carb or, or like fasting for extended periods of time, which I do not think is a good idea. I think sticking with what was working for you and for weeks and weeks and weeks, continue to be consistent. Focus on consistency above all else. Because what usually happens in my experience when I have gone through plateaus, uh, when I looked at my consistency, it was lacking. Like there was just, you know, things just going on in my life that were making me have more, you know, off days. Like I'd be going off uh, because family was in town or because there was this holiday or whatever. Um, and it can be tricky because you can you can think to yourself, oh, well, I've been doing my plan. But really, if you look back and, and you're really honest, a lot of times there are plenty of little times that you went off. So then, you know, saying, okay, I'm going to be consistent for at least six weeks, like six weeks, really excellent consistency. Down. 
another thing on plateaus is that sometimes it can feel like you're not losing weight when you actually are. It's just the weight loss is really slow. That's why I like to do daily weighing and keeping track of your seven day average over weeks and weeks and weeks and noticing how your weight is trending as opposed to just solely those numbers, the daily numbers week to week. Uh, I feel like you can get a, a better grasp on what your weight is actually doing because weight does fluctuate up and down. So, um, so basically wait it out. That's, that's, that's all I can tell you for a plateau. Wait it out and be really consistent. Don't quit. That's, the, that's always the, the, the big temptation is just quit because it's not working anymore. But continue on and, and don't give up. Okay, my eating window is from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. I have started working out since last week. I work out at 11 a.m. Is it normal to exercise while fasted? Uh, and I get lots of burps. Okay, so it is like people do uh, work out fasted. Uh, some people don't like that. It, it really depends on your own body, how you feel. Um, some people, you know, have noticed like, if, uh, and, and I think I would be in this camp, uh, working out really hard in a fasted state um, can sometimes lead to like feeling kind of nauseous afterwards. Um, uh, and I would say I, I liked working out in a fasted state back, you know, back in 2015 when I was like actually going to the gym and lifting heavy things working out in a fasted state and I enjoyed that. I felt like I got a good sweat in and stuff like that. It wasn't very scientific, but I, I did like the way I felt. Um, as far as health wise, I mean, you, you want to talk to your doctor if you have conditions that maybe contraindicate uh, working out in a fasted state. but. Um, you know, people like I think it was Dom uh, D'Agostino, and he uh, did like a five, I want to say it was a five day fast. And then before he broke his five day fast, he like went in and did some sort of ridiculous kind of deadlift for I can't remember how many. Months. It was, it, it's a ridiculous amount of weight that he lifted. The point is, it, it, so if somebody can do that, then I think you're alive. All right. So, uh, so basically, with the burping, I've not had that experience, but. Uh, you know, I would say some people have, have told me that, that they experience more, you know, gassiness, but uh, at this point, it's been so long, I really can't, I can't say for sure if I experienced that too. So, um, okay, so talk about your experience with dirty fasting. Can it stall weight loss? So I've done dirty fasting for the entire time. I didn't even know clean fasting was a thing. I didn't, I had never heard of it. I, that was like, the first time I think I heard of it was back when I had a Facebook group and, and people were asking all about it and I was like, what, what is this thing? But basically, dirty fasting is when you allow yourself some calories during uh, your fasting windows. So for example, like uh, I have, or, well in the beginning I had sugar and half and half in my coffee and throughout the entire time though, I've at least had half and half in my coffee three times a day during the fasting window. So, you know, like, let's say it's like 60 calories uh, worth of half and half. I don't measure because measuring drives me crazy, uh, but I would guess that's about how many calories uh, worth I put in there. Um, Cause I think I did measure it one time. It was about 60 uh, calories, although sometimes it's probably 80 every time. So that's what, you know, 180 to maybe 240 calories that I'm consuming in the fasting window. And the big concern I think that people have is like, well, that's gonna make it impossible to lose weight. Um, not for me, it didn't. I mean, I I was able to lose the weight uh, and I lost about a pound a week, which I think is a pretty average number. Over time, about a pound a week is a good thing to shoot for, just based on everything I've read about people who lose weight and really can keep it off. Like the big numbers are impressive and, and they can be, they can feel really motivating, but over time, generally people go back to eating, you know, how they used to eat and they gain the weight back because it was too difficult. What they were doing was too difficult. So, um, so I'm all about what can you do for the rest of your life? Like if, if, if something doesn't seem like you could do that or some small variation on that for the rest of your life, then it might not be a good idea to do it because you're just not going to stick with it. Like it, because weight loss is like a tiny, tiny portion of permanent weight loss, right? Like the actual time that you're losing weight is this small amount of time. Maintenance is for the rest of your life. So I think a lot of times people focus on the weight loss time and they don't really think about that maintenance time. This time around, like 
I'd struggled with weight my entire life. So this time around, I said, I have got to think about the rest of my life. Like not just the weight loss time because my pattern before was like, do things that I will not stick with over the long term. I'll lose the weight, get down to the right weight, and then go back to eating what I used to eat acting how I used to act and then gain all the weight you know plus some you know how it goes so this time I was really really focused on the maintenance aspect and so uh, so with that in mind dirty fasting was the thing that I thought hey man if I can have coffee during the fasting one like I can I can make that happen I can do that um, and I felt really enthusiastic <laughs> when, when thinking about that you know when I sat down and I thought what what would what would be easy? That was a Tim Ferriss question. Like, what would this look like if it were easy? What would weight loss look like if it were easy? That's what I sat down. Like, I asked myself that question. And uh, I had been doing intermittent fasting, and I thought, okay, six days a week if I did that, but then gave myself the day off on Sunday. That would be really easy. Um, and uh, if I allowed myself to eat whatever I wanted to eat, that would be really easy. And, man, if I could have coffee... And I told myself, really, whenever I wanted it, if I have, if I could have coffee with half and half in it, any time I wanted during the fasting window, that would be really easy. And um, and so that's what I did, and I stuck with it over time, and um, and I was able to lose the weight. Uh, did it make my like? Could I? The, the question, really, right? I think that you're asking is, would I have had faster results if I didn't do the dirty fasting? Like, if I just said, okay no half and half or maybe even no coffee depending on how strict you're live oh, okay one moment okay there we go sorry so what i was gonna say is black coffee would not have worked for me i would have been miserable trying to drink black coffee i've tried to do it during extended fasting i hate it so the point is giving myself the half and half in my coffee during the fasting window made fasting feel easy, which helped me to stick with it. It felt like this is effortless almost. Um, and that's, I think, really important. I think a lot of people underestimate how important it is for something to feel good and easy. Um, not to say that doing hard things is not good because I think it's very valuable to challenge yourself, but I think that when it comes to changing your habits around food, the better you can feel about it, the easier the more likely you're going to be able to stick with it over the long term, which is what it's all about, is what can you stick with for the rest of your life so that you make permanent lifestyle changes as opposed to just doing really difficult things uh, to get the weight off and then trying to figure out maintenance uh, later on. So, uh, so hopefully that helps you guys. Thank you so much for all the questions. Uh, I think we're not going to push our luck. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and end the broadcast now. Uh, and we'll try to do another one of these lives when the opportunity presents itself. So thank you guys for watching. I think I click the X. Uh, I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs>